Hello there, my name is Melissa Holding and I work for Zoll Medical. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the Zoll AED3 and also the other devices in our collection which is the AED Plus and also the G5. In terms of what differentiates these devices, they can be used in lots of different environments. So for example for the AED Plus, this is a great all-rounder device that will provide your lay responder with everything that they need to be able to respond in an emergency. So an office environment or a beautician, whatever the environment, it will be suitable for all. In terms of the G5 device, which is this unit here, you're looking for a more construction, industrial style environment where you're looking for a device that's potentially going to be chucked on the floor. It might be a case of that it's in a quite a quite a muddy environment for example the IP rating on it is um, is a high IP rating of IP55 um, but more importantly what the device does is it will conduct self-tests every day every week and every month and the biggest point of that particular device is being rescue ready it's also very popular with the um, local fire services police forces and CFR groups purely because of that because it will conduct checks to ensure that the pads conduct a small check, a small shock to those pads to ensure that if a device needs to be used in a rescue they're usable, they're not frozen, they're not out of date, there's not been a nick on any of the wiring or anything like that. The most re reliable device in the market. There's also an inbuilt thermometer so for example if it's stored in an external location in a cabinet and there was a, a situation where there was a power cut for, for, for instance if a device became too cold, it would alarm and notify you that it would need to be taken into a more warm environment, purely because we know that lithium in cold temperatures depletes. The final thing regarding the um, G5 device is it is also a bilingual device. So say for example, if you're in a scenario where you're in a population where there's Polish or Portuguese, this device can be configured so that it, uh, the first instance in terms of the language capability is English, but by a simple press of the button it would deviate to Portuguese, Polish or Dutch or whatever is needed. In terms of the AED3 device, which is this device here, this is our most advanced device. Um, it's been tried and tested with first responders, the fire service, we gained intel and clinical data to input as much technology into this device to increase, more imp to increase chances of survival and also increase um, user friendliness for whoever is going to be using this device. The actual unit is very lightweight. The pads are stored in the, in the back of the actual device. And there, you'll see on the front there is a paediatric capability with this button that you push, which will lower the joules that are required to administer a shock to a paediatric patient. You'll see a rescue ready indicator here. The device will conduct self-checks every week and every month to ensure that the device is going to be usable in um, the instance of a sudden cardiac arrest. What makes this even more advanced is that the device has Wi-Fi capability. It will allow you to use our program management system which can be subscribed to, which is called PlusTrack, which will do three things for you. It will send reminders of when pads and batteries are due to, uh, due to be renewed. For, research suggests 40% of devices in the community are not rescue ready at any given point. So having this service is really useful because the last thing you want is to have a defibrillator there that is not usable. Secondly, you can also see on a Google map exactly where the defibrillator is located and you can input where it's located in the building as well. So for example, in your buildings, your defibrillator is located on that back wall, for example. You can input that information so that somebody who's not familiar with that location knows exactly where it is if they need to go and grab it. It's perfect actually for, an for a company that you may be working with who is looking to roll out defibrillators not just simply to one location but to many because then you can monitor those. So while this is attached to your Wi-Fi, it will send notifications if there is something wrong. If the pads are out of date, if the battery is out of date, uh, there's no battery level left, it will notify you 30 days before that happens. The final thing that, which is really useful is that the data that you put into the program management system can be extracted. So you can be more proactive in terms of notifying your customers or they actually, them actually notifying their sites that they need new pads and batteries, ensuring that those devices are actually going to be rescue ready when they need to be used. What 
joins all of our devices together is the technology and it's technology that we strongly believe in. It's called real CPR feedback. Now you probably think to yourself, what does that mean? Well, what we're looking for is research indicates that clinically we're looking for 100 to 120 beats per minute if someone is in a sudden cardiac arrest in terms of increasing their chance of survival. We're also looking for a rate of five to six centimetres the depth of the chest as well. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how am I going to know that? It would be like you simply driving down the road with, driving a car without a speedometer and expected to know how fast you're actually going and that you're actually meeting a legal limit. What our devices will do is provide you with that information. So you can make sure that you are pushing harder, you are ensuring that the, the rate is being met as well to increase their chance of survival. We know that clinically from the research that's been done by the resuscitation council, etc., but actually, if we use a defibrillator with high quality CPR, which is what we're talking about, but we're increasing chances of survival by between 50 to 75%. So this technology is groundbreaking and it can make all the difference for someone who is not trained in how to respond to this sort of situation. You're at home, you're in the workplace, you're not first aid trained. This device will tell you exactly what to do from start to finish. So what I'll do is turn the device on we do come in two types of model for this particular unit, a fully automatic or a semi-automatic unit. If a device is a semi-automatic, you simply push the button when prompted. If the device is a fully automatic unit, the device will advise you that a shock is required to stand back to ensure that the environment is safe around you and that nobody's touching the casualty. And then it will deliver a countdown and indicate, shock advised, please stand back, shock will be delivered in three, two, one. In terms of the paediatric functionality, the pads, which look like this, can be used on a paediatric patient or an adult patient. They come with some tough cut scissors to be able to remove clothing and there's also a guidance in terms of exactly what to do depending on what sort of patient you're actually going to be treating. You've also got a rescue ready kit in the actual in the back of the pads, this comes with every set of replacement pads for the Zoll, AED3 and the AED Plus. And what that will include is a napkin, if in case they're sweating profusely or vomited, a razor to give them a bit of a dry shave through a bit of a woolly mammoth, um, and also some cleansing wipes and gloves to make it nice and, and sterile, a sterile environment as much as possible. We've also got a face shield in there, should you wish to do mouth to mouth um, while delivering CPR. So I'll turn the device on give you a quick demonstration of exactly what the prompts are. Automatic defibrillator. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Adult patient selected. If the patient is a child, press the child button. Remove the pad package. Cut or tear clothing to expose the patient's bare chest. Open pad package. So as you can hear, the device will tell you step by step exactly what you should be doing. And you've also got this lovely LCD colour screen that's going to indicate exactly pads to what the you should be doing. Bare chest. You've got a counter here as well, which is great information to pass on to the emergency services when they do arrive on the scene as well. Don't touch the there patient. Analyzing. Don't touch the patient. Analyzing. Shock advised. Don't touch the patient. Shock will be delivered in three, clear. two, one. Shock delivered. Start at CPR. Push to match the tone. So the shock has now been delivered and we know that it's safe to touch the patient. We've got the metronome kicking in to give us that feedback. And we've also got the barometer here, which is our real CPR technology, which indicates Push what depth harder. we should be doing. Not pushing hard enough. Push harder. Good compressions. Good compressions. Now you're going to be doing that for two minutes. We're aiming for that five to six centimetres to increase chance of survival. Unit powering off. What you would also see while using this device is after that first shock has been administered, we have some inbuilt technology called rapid shock. The device will automatically be analysing to check and see if there is a shockable rhythm while you're performing CPR. 
to, in, to ensure that when you're administering that second shock, rather than it being the eight seconds from the first shock, it will be between two and five seconds. And that is to ensure that we're spending more time on the chest, committing to our CPR, and ensuring that, that blood and oxygen circulating around the body and shocking as quick as we possibly can, but in a very safe way. I want to wish you very good luck. And if you need any more further information from us at Zoll Medical, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.